How, how do you think more generally is, 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 is he doing in terms of making inroads with Missouri? Well, I think it's a tough fight. I mean, you continue to see there's kind of a, uh, a platform, a ceiling that he keeps hitting. Uh, and the fact that now you see uh, Rick Santorum, you know, a little bit of a surge. So again, is this look, looking for the conservative alternative? So that has to cause Governor Romney some concern. Should, con should conservatives have qualms about Romney? Well, I mean, when you look at, uh, if you look at his record when he was up there in, uh, in Massachusetts and some of the, uh, you know, changing of positions he's taken, you know, maybe you should. Uh, but hopefully I would want to believe that the way that he would lead this country as president is not how he uh, governed a very blue state in Massachusetts. Congressman, um, last time you ran with an unapologetic conservative message in very heavily Democrat South Florida, and you've got a similar race this time, what do you think is the key to getting the conservative message across in a way that appeals across the board to the voters? To stand upon it. I mean, I think that too often people want to run away from it, and I think that was the beauty of uh, Ronald Reagan. He said, this is who I am, this is what I believe in, and he rallied people to it. Look. You know, my mother once said, a man must stand for something or else he'll fall for anything. And I think that's what people all across this country are looking for, individuals that will stand upon something. Oh, sure, you can steal it. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it. There's been a lot of talk about the need for a strong Senate class, no matter what happens here this cycle. Uh, any chance that you that you jump in? No, no that, that train is passed. And, you know, I put out a note back last uh, August that you know, I'm focused on being a good congressional representative. I think we have to understand you need strong people in the House of Representatives. That's the people's house. So uh, you've got people running for that seat against uh, Bill Nelson. Yeah. Congressman West, um, what do you think is... How do you feel about the current situation in Syria? Well, you know, you have to understand it's not just the current situation in Syria. You're talking about proxy of Iran and the fact that we're getting reports that you have Republican Guard, I mean, Revolutionary Guard elements in Syria. You know, we left an incredible vacuum in Iraq. We have no credible military presence. So Iran seems pretty free to uh, extend their regional hegemonic dominance. And, and that's the concern. If you go in and you do something in Syria, uh, you are really going in and fighting against Iran. Uh, Iran wants to see uh, Bashar Assad. They want to see Syria continue on to be a proxy because that's the connection that they have over to Lebanon with Hezbollah and of course the connection to uh, Hamas and uh, Islamic Jihad, Al-Quds and Al-Aqsa Maldives Brigade in Gaza Strip. So uh, let's not go rushing into something because this is a bigger conflagration than I think we really understand. Thank you. Do you see Iran as a the bottom line is Iran is a threat. Whether or not they get a nuclear device or not, Iran is a threat. Uh, before Al-Qaeda came along, the number one Islamic terrorist organization that had inflicted the most casualties on America was Hezbollah. And Hezbollah is a proxy of Iran. So, you know, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, we knew that Iran was fueling the insurgency with uh, weapons and, and the explosive force penetrators, which really did a horrible job on our men and women uh, with the IEDs. So we need to confront the fact that we've been at war with Iran ever since we allowed the Ayatollah to come to power. And I think when you look at the parallels of history, look at what's going on in Egypt right now. You know, once upon a time, you know, Jimmy Carter told the Shah to, you know, didn't support it. You got the Ayatollahs, you got the resurgence of radical Islamic terrorism, and you had American hostages in the hostage crisis. Exact same thing. A year ago, we tell Hosea Mubarak to step down. And no one, you know, paid attention to the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, today, they control about 75 to 78 percent of the Egyptian power. You've got 19 Americans that being detained in Egypt. So it's, uh, history has a way of repeating itself for those people who don't pay attention. How do you confront the challenge that is around with an opening yet another front, an actual war with boots on the ground? How do you, how do you confront the challenge? Well, you know, everyone continues to think we have to have boots on the ground. There are many different ways to attack someone's military capability and capacity, and that's what we have to be smart about. But unfortunately, we have a president who believes right now it's a great time to uh, gut our military uh, when we have all of these burgeoning uh, new threats all over the country. So we're sending the wrong uh, message. You know, Hezbollah is, is down in uh, South America. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, three weeks ago, was in Cuba. So, uh, I mean, these guys are all over the world. And let's not forget China. How do you be smart about it? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you give me an example? Excuse me, this is how you...
I mean, uh, you just got to be smart. National security strategy. Congressman. Congressman. On a lighter note, uh, everyone keeps uh, saying that the next outspoken congressman is the next blah blah West or the next uh, Mr. West. How does it feel to be the, the object of uh, attack at all times by the left? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear you. I said uh, a, a lot of new candidates are, are being called the next a a Alan West. If they, uh, for instance, uh, Otero down there in Florida, yeah. he's the Hispanic Al Alan West. You know, <laughs> they, exactly. It, it, how does it feel to be the, the, the object of, of such an adulation from one side and attack from the other? Well, you know, as far as attacks from the other side, that does not concern me because I think when you stand on principle and they don't, I'm fine with, uh, with who I am. Uh, you know, it's not about being liked, it's about being respected, and it's about, you know, restoring this constitutional republic. And if imitation is the highest form of flattery, then, then I, I'm on. I really am. But, you know, the most important thing, everyone needs to go out there and just be themselves. Right. Uh, if, if there are things that people want to take from me and, and use in their races, I'm, I'm absolutely humbled. I don't have any patent on anything. Uh, but we have to be unified as we go forward. And what do you think your chances are in your newly redistricted area? I think it's a lot better than running a district that the Florida legislature drew to be 57% Democrat. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 No, I, no they, they're, they're not. I mean, uh, if you go to the Border Patrol website, there's a category called OTMs, other than Mexico, and no one's really paying attention to that. You know, we knew up here in Washington, D.C. that Iran was working with Mexican drug cartels for assassination plot against the Saudi ambassador and also the Israeli ambassador. So there are tons of things that are happening right here in our own hemisphere that we're not paying attention to. And when you look at our force posture in uh, the South Palm area of responsibility, the only thing we really have out there is the Coast Guard. So this is not a good thing. And then switching gears a little bit, Michelle Obama is now um, going into military bases around the country and trying to change the nutrition value of the meals. Do you think that's not just replaced? Hey, let me tell you something. I, I was a soldier for 22 years. Let soldiers eat what they want to eat. Okay? <laughs> Don't go telling us what we want to eat. Great. Thank you so yeah. much. If Senator Rubio accepts the position as vice president, potential candidate, would you be open to an uh, appointment to his position by Governor Scott? Dude, I mean, I, look. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if a tree falls in the wood, <laughs> I, I will continue to serve my country. That's the most important thing. And, you know, right now there's so many pressing issues. You know, I'm not thinking about, you know, what's coming down. We've got this payroll tax debacle that, uh, unfortunately, you know, members of the Senate and the President back the American people into this two-month extension just paid for by raising the fees on loan guarantees for the government-sponsored enterprise. So this is horrible. So we need to, you know, first take care of that. we got a military that's being dismembered in the, in the face of all of these, you know, upcoming new threats that we're not going to be able to contend with. So, and we still have a debt that's clicking toward $15.5 trillion and a debt to GDP ratio that's upside down. So that's what my focus is right now. And the Democrats... And our unemployment rate down in Florida is still higher than the national rate. And the Democrats have not proposed a budget. How do you drive that point home? Well, Over a I thousand mean, days. That's what we have to keep talking about. You know, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everything. You know, the fact that Harry Reid says, you know, he's not going to do a budget, that's the only thing that we're constitutionally mandated to do. So that's a failure, absolute failure. Could you comment, please, on the efforts to divide the country along classes? Well, this is, this is the bottom line. If your policies have failed, the only thing you can fall back on is the, the policies of envy and divisiveness. And that's what he's trying to do. I don't know if you saw the Heritage Foundation report. We're starting to get more people there in the entitlement class and the production class. And as long as you continue to stoke those type of fires, that's how they're going to try to make sure that they get reelected. Because someone like an Alan West comes along and says, we've got to reduce the size and scope of the federal government. If you got 50 to 51 percent of Americans wedded to the federal government, either by subsistence check or employment check, that's not a good thing. So that's the race that we're in. Do you think that that was a planned effort to get more people so that they are dependent, no, so they don't want the government Absolutely. And that's what uh, incenses me the most because 
you know, I'm about economic freedom, not economic dependency, which is what this administration is about. Mm. Congressman, is there um, any legislation right now that you'd like to draw attention to, either that you're co-sponsoring or supporting, or that needs well, to be I think, opposed? I think one of the important pieces of legislation right now, the Chairman of the Armed Services Committee, House Armed Services Committee, Buck McKeon, has brought legislation that will, you know, kind of delay this whole sequestration hit on the military. You know, $127 billion, that's all it takes in one year. You know, the GAO put out a report last year, there's two to three hundred billion dollars of redundant and duplicative programs in Washington, D.C. We cannot make the military the bill payer for our fiscal irresponsibility. So I think it's very important. That's a great piece of legislation we need to get behind. And also this payroll tax extension, we need to make sure that we have the right pay for us. This millionaire tax crap, you cannot allow <laughs> the tax code to be used as a weapon against people who are out there working hard, producing, and who are trying to create the conditions to hire Americans. You know, two very different visions for our country. Represent, you just mentioned economic dependency. Uh, Newt Gingrich took a lot of fire when he when he tried to make a sim an analogous argument when he used the phrase the food stamp president. Yeah. Um, how do you see that conversation? proceeding through the general election. Do you think it's, is, is there is there a better way to talk about that? No, or is no you just got to say the truth. And I think that the more we get the, uh, the statistics out there, that there has been about a 42 to 43 percent increase of food stamp uh, recipients uh, under President Obama. There's been 6.4 million more Americans doing the poverty rolls. I think about a 16 to 17 percent increase. You know, gasoline prices up 83 percent. Price of beef up 24 percent. Pound of bacon up 23 percent. You know, we're going in the wrong direction. So do you agree with that with that characterization then? The food I, well, I have already been on TV and I said, look, you know, you call it as you see it. And uh, if the president is enacting policies that create those type of results, then you have to categorize them as such. Congressman, what would you say to young Americans who are graduating from college and who are coming into the struggling economy, especially conservatives trying to overcome adversity of their graduations? First of all, in November, don't vote for the president. <laughs> Uh, if you want to see a better and a brighter future, uh, look, elections have consequences. And I think we all have understood that coming from 2008. Now we know what hope and change is. Now we know what we need to fundamentally transform our country. It is incumbent, incumbent upon us, the members of the House, the Senate, conservatives, whatever, to understand who we are, what we stand for, and draw the contrast in those two different visions and present it to the American people. That is the key thing we have to have happen. You know, enough with these food fights that we see between our candidates. Let's talk about their vision. Let's contrast it against what President Obama has for America. And then let us pick the person that's going to be the best gladiator to go into the arena of ideas against President Obama. You addressed uh, the remarks by your opponent, Patrick Murphy, regarding his comments about him being a coward for running when he just ran on his race, the primary race. Hey, look, you know, I don't know. I guess 22 years in the Army, shot at, almost blown up, jumped out of airplanes. I guess that's not impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Representative West, I just want to shake your hand. Thank you for Thank you. your service to our country. No and for being a Tea Party guy. Uh, it's easy to be a constitutional conservative kind of guy. Anybody else? Are you worried about the Tea Party now? Does it seem like the, they're ineffective? Do you think that they're No, look, sleeping? let me tell you. No, yeah, they're not sleeping. They're, they're very smart. I mean, if you think about what's going on, you have the Occupy Wall Street movement show up. There was no need of them getting out there and creating the back and forth with them. They went to ground, as we would say in the military, and kind of like the blob. <laughs> They'll pop back up, they'll show their energy, they'll show their capability. But right now, look how people are looking at the Occupy Wall Street movement. They've lost all the momentum, they've lost their support, and now people will be able to once again focus on that constitutional conservative grassroots movement. So they didn't create you know, a back and forth. They didn't fall into the trap that the liberal progressives laid out. Very smart strategic move. You appeared in Runaway Slave, I saw that last night. Did I? Yeah. Oh, I Interviewed by... Uh, oh, I know. I, I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you saw, you saw the well, I know, that, I know that I was in it. Look, the thing that the other side cannot stand to have someone like myself mm -hmm. being prominent. You know, I was born and raised in the inner city. And when you look at my story, it's a story that understands American exceptionalism. 
And we've got to get more people off the 21st century economic plantation if they want to continue to perpetuate. And so uh, that was a very important uh, film that he put out there. Yeah. And we've got to get that message into the African American community. That's why we had the conservative black forum about three weeks ago. Very well received. You know, C-SPAN covered it in full two hours. I think they replayed it a couple of times. So uh, the, the, the core of the black community is conservative. We, we just got to tell them. <laughs> Yep. Thank you. Thank you.